Today, I'll be continuing work on Perrin's Axe, trying to get better results with vacuum forming and then joining the two vacuum formed halves to create a solid looking axe head. I'll link the first part of this series above in case you need to catch up. Let's start by improving the base for the 3D printed molds. I didn't have the right tools on hand to make a wooden base, so I'm going to improvise with a core of crumpled aluminum foil that extends beyond the edge of the 3D printed part and a little tape to temporarily hold the sections together. So now I can cover the whole thing with cellular clay and mold that to define the edges of the axe with a slight undercut. This type of paper mache is perfect because it dries solid with minimal shrinkage. So now I have this sturdy base, I'm going to drill small holes along all the edges of the 3D printed part and also a few into the part itself around the center where it wasn't getting good definition in the previous round of testing. I switched to a larger bit for widening the holes from the back to increase the airflow directed at these key points. In addition to the new bases for the molds, I also added sturdy guides to the vacuum former so I can lower the frame faster and more accurately, and I got a little more suction by removing an old clogged filter that was giving one of my vacuums a weaker pull. A vacuum pump and tank would be a good future upgrade, but for now I'm working with what I've got. I also heated the styrene up to 350 Fahrenheit this time, and the details are coming through better with a more defined cut line. Still room for improvement, but workable. However, there wasn't any noticeable improvement for the handle molds after following that same process. Also, heating the plastic hotter made things worse in this case because it wanted to wrinkle over the course of these long handle shapes that barely fit on the platen, so I decided to continue with just the axe head for now. The next step for turning these formed sheets into a fully three-dimensional prop is to sturdy up the walls, which will also create a way to join the halves together. I had some plastic wood filler on hand, so I'm spreading a layer over the inside of the pieces. Once the filler dries, it can be strengthened with a couple coats of wood glue. I had a few imperfections on the front side where the plastic got a slight wrinkle and where the seams in the mold shifted from all the heat. Because there's a thick backing of filler now, I can sand down those areas without worrying about making a hole in the styrene. This worked really well and saved wasting the whole sheet over minor imperfections. Now I'm going to line the whole inside with craft foam to ensure the filler doesn't crack over time and also to further build out an edge so I have a more substantial area for gluing the halves together. The heat gun helps to form it into the recessed areas and then it gets stuck down with more wood glue, although in retrospect, contact cement would have been a better choice since it bonds instantly. I left a wide brim of styrene to prevent the part from deforming during the backing process, but now it's time to cut away the excess with scissors for the rough trim and then switching to the Dremel for the precision trim right up to the cut line. I'm also sanding down the filler and craft foam layers to create a level interior brim on the back, and I hollowed out a space for the handle attachment. The halves still have too much flex to them, which could cause issues with the finish over time. So I'm filling the voids with hot glue and scraps of foam, and also gluing in a piece of corrugated plastic that will create a sturdy anchor point for attaching the handle later on. I'm going to sandwich a layer of craft foam between the two halves for two reasons. One, that will create a sturdy seam, and two, it'll give me something to work with when refining the blade edges. I cut it out a little bigger in all directions and used contact cement and hot glue to attach both halves to the foam core. I sanded the foam flush with the flat sides of the styrene, but for the sharp edges of the blade and spike, I'm sanding the foam at an angle to extend the lines that lost some of their sharpness in the molding stage. There were a couple of areas that I didn't get lined up quite right, so I filled those with some of the plastic wood and the very top also got a craft foam veneer to remove any trace of a seam line. I'm brushing on more wood glue to strengthen the foam edges and any patched areas, and then that gets a light sanding once it's dry, so it blends smoothly into the styrene. So vacuum forming didn't end up being a time saver for this particular project, but it was a great learning experience, and I know that I'll find more suitable applications for future projects, and I'll keep improving my setup to get better results. I'm going to stop there for now, but next time I'll be adding a handle and getting this all painted up, which is gonna look pretty cool in the end. Thanks again for all your suggestions from the last vacuum forming video. I'll continue to implement those as I'm able. Also, please click that button if you're enjoying this project. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.